What's up guys? Today, I've got my hands on the Geekon IT13. Now this is probably one of the most powerful mini PCs we have seen on the channel so far. It's powered by a 14 core Intel Core i9 processor. That's the 13900H clocked at 2.6 gigahertz base with up to 5.4 gigahertz turbo. For graphics, we have the integrated Intel Iris Xe. For RAM, we have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And for storage, we have a two terabyte M.2 SSD drive. You can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the storage, and there is also an additional enclosure for a two and a half inch SATA drive. Furthermore, we've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 2.5 gigabit LAN. We've got a full size SD card slot. We've got two USB 4 ports. This is running Windows 11 Professional, supports quad 4K display output. You've got a built in cooling fan, and this supports up to 4K at 60 Hertz. Now inside the box, you do get a whole bunch of accessories. Let me quickly show you what you get. So user manual, we've got a metal VESA mount with screws so you can mount this mini PC to the back of your monitor. This comes with an HDMI cable, power cable, a power supply, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. So proper full sized laptop power supply here. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. So mini PC is made from a combination of metal and plastic. We've got plastic at the top, we got metal grills on the side and the bottom plate is also made from metal. We got the Geekom logo on top. On the front, we do have some convenient ports. You've got two USB 3 ports, a combo headphone microphone jack, physical power button. If we keep going, we've got Kensington lock there built into the grills. On the back, we've got power socket, USB 4 port, HDMI 2.0, and there is another HDMI 2.0 on the other side and another USB 4. So it's quad display output, so two HDMIs and the two USB 4s, all capable of displaying 4K 60. We've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port right there. USB 3, USB 2. If we keep going, there's a full size SD card slot and that brings us back to the front. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. Okay, I just want to quickly check out the internals upgrade options for the Geekom Mini IT13. So this is the one with the powerful 14 core i9 processor. So at the bottom, we've got four screws. Let's open them up first. Okay, so the screws don't come completely out, but once you've got it loose enough, you'll be able to remove the cover. So when you remove it, do be careful, there is a ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is actually your SATA cable. It's already connected to the board. So you can see here, you've got a, sorry, so you can see you've got a SATA cage here for a two and a half inch SATA drive. So you can even use an SSD SATA drive, whichever one you prefer, stick that in there. And I believe it supports up to two terabytes max. Um, the RAM maximum supported is 64 gigs. It's DDR4 RAM. We have two sticks of 16, so you can have 32 gigs per slot in the future. Over here, you can see the SSD drive. It's Lexar branded and it's two terabytes. That is the maximum it supports, so maximum two terabyte SSD supported. You've got another slot here if you wanted to install another M.2 SSD drive. The smaller size drive will fit here, and I believe that also supports up to four terabytes max. So easy upgrade options for the future. You can do it yourself. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all hooked up to my TV and capture card, and we're gonna find out exactly what this little beast is capable of. So the Geekom Mini IT13, here is the desktop. This is Windows 11 Professional pre-installed and ready to use. If we first of all check out the system properties, you will see it's Windows 11 Professional, 64-bit operating system, and you can see some of the specs, 13th gen Intel Core i9, that's the 13900H, 32 gigs of RAM installed, and if we go to the activation information, you can see it's activated and ready to use. System storage info, we have two terabytes of internal storage from which 1.86 terabytes are usable. And from that we have 1.81 terabytes free to use. So when you first power on, this is what you get. I've not installed anything at all. This is what you can expect storage wise. 
the second drive you're seeing is my 64 gig flash drive containing all my 4K samples. So now we're going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and we're going to start off with the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo and the first file is 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing super smooth, no sweat at all. Now the next clip is high bitrate 4K 180 megabits per second. Again it's playing super smooth, there is absolutely no stuttering or buffering issues. Okay, the real test, 400 megabits per second. Again, I can't fault the playback, it's playing super smooth. So high bitrate 4K samples from a USB flash drive plugged into a USB 3 port on the front of the mini PC, you can see it's playing fine. So now we're testing a few 4K60 video samples with various HDR formats, and you can see they are playing beautifully with no issues. And I've tested different file names and different HDR formats, and they all work out of the box using the default media player, so you don't even have to download any codecs to make things work. Okay, so moving on now to some 4K video streaming on YouTube, starting off with the usual Costa Rica demo. And you can see YouTube does support a maximum resolution of 4K60, with HDR. My name is Willy Wonka. You see, I'm something of a magician. Prepare to be amazed. Type one. Love my work. Hate babies. I am this close to the life no one thought I deserved. Okay, so next up we're testing Netflix from the web browser and maximum streaming quality supported is 1080p. All right, so gaming test and the first game we're playing is GTA 5. We've got the resolution set to 1080p and graphics set to very high and you can see we're achieving around 43 frames per second average and the game plays pretty well. And when trying out something a bit newer like WWE 2K23 with the resolution set at 1080p and graphics set to the lowest, you can see the game plays in literally slow motion. And even when switching down to 720p, we get similar results. So you're not going to be able to play WWE 2K23 with the integrated Intel graphics. Another game which struggles at 1080p resolution is Undisputed Boxing. You can see the frame rates are very low, 13 frames per second, and the game is unplayable. However, switching to however switching down to 720p resolution and keeping the graphics settings on low, it gave me much better frame rates than before and at least made this game playable. This mini PC does have a USB 4 port, so you could connect an external graphics card. I actually don't have one in hand to test, but in theory, it should work fine. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 831K. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1711 and multi-core score of 11,359. And this achieves a CPU benchmark score by Passmark of 29K. So let's see how this compares with the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to compare the prices, specs and features of all the latest mini PCs. Now the ranking is based on benchmark scores. So we're looking at the Antutu, Geekbench and Passmark and I give it an average and the mini PC gets ranked accordingly. So based on that, you can see the Geekom Mini IT13 has taken position 4 on this chart. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Geekom Mini IT13. This video and my tests pretty much sums up what this thing can do. The Intel Core i9 14 core processor is very powerful and capable. It handles everyday tasks like a breeze, such as general web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics, or even 4K video editing. You can play AAA games at 1080p medium to low graphics, depending on the game. System stays fairly cool thanks to the dual fans, and you have plenty of connectivity and an impressive quad display output via two HDMI ports and two USB 4 ports. Another major plus point is the ability to be able to upgrade the RAM and storage in the future and it's quite easy to access those internals. This is a perfect little mini PC for studying or getting some work done and it's a super space saving design. 
The fan noise when maxed out when you're playing a game, for example, is little on the louder side at around 45 decibels, otherwise fairly silent during normal use. Now with all that being said, any questions you guys know what to do. Meanwhile, do share your thoughts. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.